Hey family, welcome back. I'm Brother Desmond. I'm I got brother. here with me. Brother Al. Yeah, I, I had passed at the Vineyard of Israel. Uh, and we're coming again on a Download a Doctrine Update yeah. series. This installment. We're back. We are back. <laughs> I really like doing these. Yeah, likewise. You yeah. know, and you know, the good thing about it is it's needed. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know. Yeah, we can patch in little, little small updates. And so uh, in this installment, what we want to do is is uh, talk about the idiom or the term, the terminology, the phrase right, right. coming in the clouds. Coming in the clouds. Yeah, okay. coming in the clouds. Okay. You know, that, that's one of the, 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 the parts in Scripture, especially in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. It talks about coming in the clouds, and we talk about prophecy. And, and one of the reasons a lot of people say that uh, the prophecies can't, uh, can't be fulfilled yet is because every eye is supposed to see him, and he's supposed to come in the clouds. Mm -hmm. And so coming in the clouds is a uh boy you want to talk about giving us a headache oh, in this man. western mindset yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we yeah, miss the understanding yeah. of coming in the clouds we don't have a hebraic mindset right. whatnot so um that's what this installment is about is about coming in the cloud hopefully we this we could do this you know hopefully we'll keep this relatively short and succinct and to the point what do, what do you say pastor yeah i mean I, we'll do our best um uh, uh do our best to explain it to you by you know how, just exactly how the bible is intended for us to understand it. You know, you know how we understand it coming in the clouds. <laughs> uh, we understand it like this right here. Let's go to Acts 1. Yeah. You know, we understand it from the literal standpoint and the literal standpoint only. Mm -hmm. But if we want truth, we need to line, align our understanding with the understanding that the Bible is uh, giving us. Mm -hmm. So that's important to us. It may not be important to many, but I mean, it is important to me. So... I need to understand the scriptures, you know, the way that God delivered them. Sure. You know, sure. so let's look at it uh, coming in the clouds. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what I've learned, you know, long story short, is judgment talk. You know, it's a uh, language that the Lord uses to draw parallels mm -hmm. uh, when he's coming to take down a nation or pronounce his judgment. He'll use those terms. Coming in the clouds. Right. And, and the people. Of, of those days or the scriptures, they understood that language. Mm -hmm. So we need to get the understanding that they got. Sure. You know, and the Lord has provided this, so we can, uh, let's do the best we can to go through it. But first, let's understand it the way that we understand it here in the West. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Acts 1, right? This is after Yeshua rose. I guess we took a detour. All good. Yeah, Acts rose. Yeah, yeah. You know. So I want to point out something here. Acts, Acts, Acts 1, Yeshua is getting ready to depart and go up into the heavens, right? So we're just going to drop down uh, verse, uh, oh, let me get there. Uh, verse 9. Okay. Yes. And when he had spoken these things. This Yeshua spoke to the apostles. While they beheld. Uh -huh, they watched. He was taken up. How? And a cloud received him out of their sight. Right. So that's how we understand. It. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Watch because this. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, mm -hmm. which also said, "Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into the heaven?" Julia. This same Jesus, which ye shall see taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So we take ah. these two scriptures and we combine them. And we, this is how we get the literal form of we're going to see him dropping down out of the sky in a, in a cloud. Yeah, yeah. And what all it's saying is, okay, let me ask you this. So how did he, how did he leave? Well, they say he's just taking up in, in the, the cloud. cloud. So how's he going to come back? Well, he's going to come in back cloud. in the cloud. So let me ask you this. Is that not what he say? I'm coming in the clouds? I'm coming in the clouds. So that is what he mean. Mm. It doesn't mean that it's literally going to happen, but whatever coming in the clouds mean, that's how he's going to return. Ah, okay. That's how he's going to return. Okay. All right, so now let's look at it. So this, so we got to figure out what it means. Exactly. Let me ask you. Let's go to uh. So is this coming in the clouds, right? Mm -hmm. Is it any different from this coming right here, Matthew twenty-four? Yeah. I submit to you that this is the same coming. Is it not coming no five or six times, right? Matthew twenty-four, verse twenty-seven, uh, verse thirty is what we want, but let's let's read into it just a bit. Go ahead. For as the as the lightning coming out of the east and shineth even unto the west. Mm -hmm so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, how did he say he's going to come? In the clouds. Yeah. Right? 
So let, let's see if he's saying it. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days mm -hmm. shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All right. So we agree that this is the same coming as in Acts. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. And then shall appear the sign mm -hmm. of the Son of Man in heaven. Right. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. So what tribe, what are they mourning for? Well, he's returning, coming in judgment. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't be mourning if he was coming to pat everybody on the back. And give a reward of salvation. Yeah. yeah. Right. But he coming to reward every man according to as their work shall be. This mm -hmm. is judgment day. This is judgment. Mm -hmm. So people going to receive uh, what they did with the works of their hand, mm -hmm. by the works of their hand. So look at this. 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Is that not what it said in Acts? That's what he said, coming in clouds. He said he's going to go like he left, but he's coming. Is he coming? What did he, how no. do you say it? Coming in the clouds of heaven with right. power and great glory. Okay, so now, this coming is the same, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you uh, come and execute judgment, right? Let me ask you this. Can you execute judgment on anybody that's outside of your house? Oh, right now? Mm. Why not? No. I mean, you don't have the power or authority. Power authority to do it. Right. So if he coming to execute judgment, right, right. and give our reward, that, that, that let us know that he, he has power and authority. And authority. So he has the kingdom. Yes. He's coming in. So look at what he said. He's coming in what? Power, power. and great glory. So yes. he's not coming in the form of a, a man. Mm. He coming in his Godship. Yes. And when he get here, all the tribes of the earth is going to mourn. Mm -hmm. Right? So can any man look on God's face and live? No. It's dangerous. Yeah. So he's not coming to look like us, physical. He coming in glory. Yes. And he coming in the clouds, right? And all the trials of the earth is going to see him. Mm -hmm. So watch this tie in. Revelations chapter 1. Because mm -hmm. Matthew just told us. And then shall all the trials of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Yeah. So that ain't no physical man. Right. But let's just see. Watch this. Because Revelation going to help me prove that out. Because I know some don't believe it, but mm -hmm. it's So Revelation chapter 1. Right. Chapter 1. Let me get there. Chapter 1. Let's get right to the, uh, to the section, to the uh Verse, verse 7, and then we're going to uh, go backwards. Go ahead. Okay. Behold, mm -hmm. he cometh with the clouds. Yes. And every eye shall see him. Uh-huh. And they also which pierced him. What happened? And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. It's, that's Matthew. Yeah. That's Matthew 24. Yes. Right. All the trials shall see him. The, uh, uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh, you on eight? Yes. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was. And which is to come, mm -hmm. the Almighty. Right. So, Matthew said he's going to come in power and great glory, though, right? Right. This is the same coming. He said all the tribes of the earth is going to mourn in Matthew. Right. This is what he said right now, right? Everybody that pierced him, or all the kindreds of the earth shall mourn or wail because of him. Yes. So, also what this chapter is describing is him coming in his glory. Mm. Look at how, but because people take this and mix it up, uh, they make this something else. Watch this. They drop down to verse 14. 14. Mm -hmm. His head. Mm -hmm. They're going to see him. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. His head and his hair were white like wool. Yes. As white as snow. Mm -hmm. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Yeah. So this is like a regular man? No. Okay. And his feet like unto fine brass, mm. as if they burned in a furnace, and mm -hmm. his voice as the sound of many waters. I, I can't think of one man this remind me of. No. Yes. No. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he had his right hand seven stars <laughs> and out of his mouth went a sharp two edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Look at that. Mm. His countenance, his visage, how he looked was as what? The sun, sun shining shineth in his strength. strength. As long as along with the uh, the brass being burned, once the uh, brass is burned, it's, it has a glow. Mm -hmm. So it's like. Revelation is describing him in his glory. Yeah. And him coming. People ain't going to see that. No. Well, this, this is the vision, ain't it? This is the vision. This is a vision that I have. It, it's consistent with Matthew 24. Mm-hmm. And dare I say, 
Acts chapter 1. Yes. Those, these are all the same coming. But people are even reading this revelation as, and expecting for it to be literal. As a literal. A vision has to be interpreted. Mm -hmm. Right? And it has to be interpreted uh, properly. Yes. Because the Bible talk about a, a vision that's not interpreted properly. Mm. It says like the legs of the lame is not equal. Oh, so yeah. So it's a proverb uh, in the mouth of a fool. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to get different understanding. Yeah. That what it was originally intended to say. Right. So long story short, judgment or him coming in the clouds is talking about him coming to render judgment, mm -hmm. not him coming physically to appear. Yeah. But by the judgment that he rendered, you know, his presence is there. You know that uh, I am the Lord. So you know that I'm here by what I do. Right. And that's what it's saying. Yeah. But people have taken that and they've uh, applied that to a, to a lot of different things. Let's let's go further because he's, he's come in the cloud before. Mm, okay. And I, I just want to see if they saw him. I'm talking about Old Testament. Like he came, you know, before he came in the flesh, he came in the cloud. Oh. Let's so let's pick it up at uh, Isaiah chapter 19. Okay. Because people are always talking about what he ain't did. Isaiah chapter 19, we'll pick it up at verse 1. And then we'll get a little bit more understanding. I want you to read something for me. Okay. To help us. You know, Isaiah 19 chapter 1. I mean chapter Verse 1. Isaiah 19, verse 1. Go ahead. The burden of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a <coughs> swift cloud. Hold on for a minute. <laughs> What's burden mean? Judgment. Yeah. And his judgment is on who? Egypt. Mm -hmm. So he, who took down Egypt? Assyrians did at this point. Assyrians. And mm -hmm. then the, Babylon. The yep, yep, yeah, yeah. Babylon did. Mm -hmm. yep. So Isaiah is seeing this. The yep. Lord is showing this to Isaiah before it happens. Mm hmm. Right, and look at what he's saying. He's saying, so we're saying Assyria, we're saying Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. Babylon did it. The Lord is saying, I did it. You see that? Yeah. So the, yeah. a lot of the events in history. The Lord ride it on the mm -hmm. cloud. Look at right. that. Right. Now, which Egyptian saw? <laughs> Pharaoh Nico? That's my favorite one to say. Pharaoh Nico. That's all I want to know right now. <laughs> <laughs> I read about him in the scriptures. Yeah. <laughs> stuck with you. Yeah. <laughs> But he came in the cloud. Yeah. So no. is it different coming in the cloud than in, in the New Testament? No. How no. many coming in? The, how many different versions or natures of coming in the cloud can we have? No, he, he used the same. It's gonna be the same, yeah. right? So yeah. he said one more time. The burden of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud. Okay. And shall come into Egypt, mm -hmm. and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at its presence, mm -hmm. and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. So it sounds like judgment. Which yes. is what we said, coming in the clouds is a, a sign of judgment or yes. is judgment language. Yes. Right. Let's read a little bit more to see if he's judging. Go and ahead. I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they shall fight everyone against his brother mm -hmm. and everyone against his neighbor, city against city and kingdom against kingdom. Right. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. Mm -hmm. And I will destroy the counsel thereof. Mm -hmm. And they shall seek the, to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel Lord. Yes. And a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord of hosts. You see that? Yeah. Wow. You see that? Yeah. Yep. So look at this. Mm -hmm. Verse 22 and 23. And then we, go ahead. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. Mm. He shall smite and heal it. Mm. And they shall return even to the Lord. And he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. Mm. In the day that there shall be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrians shall come into Egypt, and the Egypt into the Assyrian, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, uh. even a blessing with the midst of the land. Okay, so that's, that's good. But the point is, he said, the Lord shall smite, mm -hmm. and the Lord is going to heal them. Yeah. Right, but it's the Lord doing. Mm -hmm. It's the Lord is doing. But he did it. He said he came in the cloud. He came in the cloud. And he brought the judgment with him. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's read this to further help the people understand. Okay. And then we'll get into maybe a couple more scriptures. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you, you, you want to start? Yes, start. Yes, okay. Start. This, is, uh, this is from uh, Shredding the Veil website. God speaks in parallels at times. He will mention one thing 
And then the very next part of the verse say it differently as another thing. All right, like he says, hear, O Israel, and listen, O Jacob. Mm -hmm. He's saying the same. He's just explaining what he just said by, uh, in a parallel form. Okay. Mm -hmm. When he does this, he is equating the first with the second, to right, your point. Right, right. And one becomes a simile or a metaphor for the other, which God will use later in prophecy to stand for both meanings. Right. Here's an example in Psalm now. 97. Okay, so go ahead. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Mm. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Right. In the poetic parallel example, clouds and judgment, um, excuse me, clouds and darkness are equated to righteousness and judgment. Right, because clouds and darkness was on that first line. Yep, clouds and, and darkness was around the throne, round about him, and then... Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Right, S same thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. When the prophets later used the words clouds or darkness, it was in the context of the coming judgments they were prophesying of destruction and desolation, which God pronounced against a nation or city. Like we read in Egypt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sitting at the right hand of the father equals judgment. When a king takes his seat on his throne, he is sitting to hear matters to be judged. Right. You want this Daniel 7? Uh, is, go ahead and read it. Okay. Daniel 7, 13 and 14. I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven mm -hmm. and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. It was Daniel 7, uh, 13 and 14. All right. So he's receiving the kingdom. Okay. Yep. Coming to the clouds was God's prophetic judgment language that the people would feel his presence and see the results of the judgment he delivered against them. Right. It did not mean that the people would literally see God in the clouds. So why do you think more people don't know or understand that? Yeah. So not being able to understand uh, the way the language of the Bible is written. Right. We interpret it with our Western mindset. Right, right. Yeah. Let me continue. Yeah. The scriptures speak of God traveling in the clouds. Mm -hmm. A reference here is Psalm 104 and 3. Right. Of the clouds being the dust of his feet. A reference here is, is Nahum right. chapter 1 verse 3. And so um, the Lord shook the earth. I'm sorry. The earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills were moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of, of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. Mm -hmm. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wind, the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. And the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out chariots and scattered them. So he, he, he's sending out judgment. Yes. Chariots and scattered, but nobody is seeing them. Right. But he's saying he's there, in, and he's present, and he's bringing all of these things to pass. Right. So what they would physically see is his judgment. Is his judgment. But it's being given, or being, uh, it's being given to the people by way of armies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, it, and the Bible speak like that over and over and over again. Yes. Right. Like Jeremiah four. You want to go there? Yeah. 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 And, and get that part about Caiaphas. Yeah. OK. OK. Jeremiah four. Jeremiah four. Let's go look at Jeremiah four. And, and, and the thing about the funny part about it is the Bible doesn't deviate from how uh, it expresses coming in the clouds. Mm -hmm. Coming in the clouds mean the same is used the same way all, all the time. Yeah. So by the time we understood the Old Testament and how it's been used, by the time we got to the New Testament, just like the Hebrews, we should have understood what coming in the clouds meant. We should have. Yeah. <laughs> we should. Right. Jeremiah 4, mm -hmm. verse 5 through 7 and then 12 and 13. That's fine. Yes. Sir. Okay. Jeremiah 4 and 5. Declare ye in Judah and publish in Jerusalem and say, blow ye the trumpet in the land, cry, gather together and say, assemble yourselves. And let us go into the defense cities, mm. set up the standard towards Zion, retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north mm. and great destruction. Mm -hmm. The lion is come up from the hills. Yes. 
from the from the from his thicket, excuse me, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. So that's 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 King Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. He's sending them to uh, to he's sending them in Jerusalem up on his people now. Yes, uh -huh. he has gone forth from his place to make the land desolate, and thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. What is that? That's the Lord's judgment upon the city of Jerusalem. Yes. Yes. Skip to 12. And he's bringing it by way of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh -huh. Even a full wind from those places shall come unto me. Now also will I give sentence against them. Mm -hmm. Behold, he shall come up as clouds. You see that? Mm. He said I shall give sentence. Like I shall pass judgment. That's what that means. Yes. Upon them. Yes. And Nebuchadnezzar is going to come up how? He shall come up as clouds and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us. So let me ask you this. Nebuchadnezzar coming on the cloud? <laughs> no. Uh huh? No. He can ride on the chariots of the wind like the Lord? No. So what is it describing? It's describing that, that he's using that army. Yeah, old school army fight. Hand to hand, uh, man to man, uh, horseback riding. Like this is, the horses are kicking up the dust. Mm. You know, they turn, they making the land desolate. They turn yeah. things up, you know, and it's just kicking up so much dust. It's like, it's a cloud of dust. But this is how God's judgment is. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so what you're saying is you send a large army mm -hmm. and they're trekking across the land and they got horses and chariots yeah. and they got battle array. And as they're trekking across the dust, yeah. they're literally kicking up what appears Creating to be a large cloud right, coming, right, right. coming over. Right. Would make sense yeah. in this warfare. I mean, and it's it, and if it's a, uh, you know, poetic or descriptive language, it makes sense too. Mm -hmm. Imagine you being an Israelite and you got to read about your city uh, being destroyed from a poetry standpoint. From a poetic standpoint. Yeah, poetic yeah, yeah, standpoint. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, the destroy the lions. Yeah, Moses are red, violence are blue. Like <laughs> the lions coming up yeah. and you go lay this land down. Right. The destroyer of the uh, north. Yeah. 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 But you could, as you can see, it doesn't change. Like coming in the clouds is always describing judgment, mm -hmm. you know, and it's always describing warfare. Yeah, you're right. So let me grab this, this okay. as well. This is the same judgment language used when Yeshua prophesied the destruction of the temple and of Jerusalem in Matthew 24, exactly. 24 30. Right. And there's, it shall appear the sign of Son of Man in heaven, and they shall arri arrive all the tro uh, tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and a great glory. Yeah. And still, again, before Caiaphas in Matthew 24 and 64. Mm-hmm. That's Caiaphas was the high priest. The right. high priest. You Yeshua should. said unto him, right. Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power mm. and coming in the clouds of heaven. Right. Sitting on the right hand of power was judgment, authority, and stating it with the words from the Old Testament prophets, warning of judgment in a day that the, in the day that the Lord was coming in the clouds of heaven. Right. Caiaphas became angry because he knew the judgment language of the prophets. We, we don't know. It, right. But right. that would make sense why Caiaphas would tear his clothes. clothes and, right. you know, because he knew the judgment and language of the prophets, but he did not recognize Yeshua as the son of God. Right. Caiaphas then drew the false conclusion that Yeshua had blasphemed as he knew that only God was able to pronounce judgment. And that's why Caiaphas tore his clothes. But he understood coming in the cloud was God passing judgment. Right. He said, <laughs> the scripture does he not. Just didn't say you, he just didn't think Yeshua was the one to bring that judgment. Right, because right. Yes. Exactly. Uh -huh. The scripture does not mean that Caiaphas would literally see Yeshua in the clouds. It's judgment language. Sitting on the right hand of the power equals coming in the clouds of heaven. And both of them equals judgment from on high. Right. Yeshua told Caiaphas and the Sanhedrin that they were going to see the judgment of God against Jerusalem and that temple. Yeah. And the, and as that temple and city were destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD, we can know that God's judgment was carried out just as Yeshua had prophesied. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just as he said. And that was uh, him coming in the clouds to uh, take down the city of Jerusalem. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, it's judgment talk. It's judgment language. It's judgment language. So we it's, shouldn't it's be out there literally thinking, you know, elevated clouds coming down with your shoe on top. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's him coming in judgment. Yes. You know, and, and we, until people, more and more people see that, they're going to continue to make the mistake of looking for him to come 
you know, literally in the clouds, you know, something that's never going to happen. Right. You know, so, you know, hopefully we can understand it that way, just as the prophets did, and that'll help us, you know, interpret the Bible more correctly. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's awesome. I, I really enjoy this. You know, these idioms, these Hebraic sayings are all over yeah. the book, all over the Bible, in right. the scriptures. Putting the puzzles together. That's Putting the puzzles is. together. So I, I've enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to, you know, bringing out other idioms and bringing yeah. out other understanding. But but the, the, the crux of the matter, what you're saying is, is it's judgment language. That's it's not it. literal. That's okay. It. All right. Pastor, what else you got for us? I mean, once again, as always, be honest with the scriptures is all we ask. Yeah, be honest with the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And we also ask, hey, leave us a comment. Like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. If there's anything you have questions about, or even if you disagree, hey, yeah. drop it in the comments. I'm like Kevin Durant sometimes. I got time. I yeah. have, you know, <laughs> time we want you to, to, to like, yeah. leave us a comment, and, uh, and interact and engage with us as yeah. we download a doctrine update. I'm Brother Desmond. I'm Brother Al. And we are the Vineyard of Israel. Until next time. Shalom.